Okay, uh, this is going to be a review, a break, breakdown review of uh, the Accurite uh, Professional Weather Center Model 01036. Uh, you can see that the way it looks uh, at this point, this is the way it's delivered uh, in the back uh, box when you open it up. But I um, had problems with this uh, unit. Uh, the temperature uh, has consistently spiked during the day. If it gets hit by uh, sunlight, um, the temperature goes uh, up dramatically and really doesn't produce an accurate temperature reading. Uh, even with the uh, aspirated fan uh, system that it has. <clears throat> so I took it apart and um, uh, tried to find out what was going on. There's another problem with these all-in-one units. Um, the uh, wind speed, according to National Weather Service, should be at um, uh, 10 meters, uh, approximately 30 feet off the ground, while the um, temperature reading should be 2 meters, or approximately 6 to 7 feet off the ground. So if you have these, one of these all-in-one uh, units, uh, you're not going to meet both of those con conditions at the same time. Okay, I've already, there's uh, four screws in the bottom of this unit here um, that you can take out. You have to be careful not to take the two that are sort of in the center of this area, but the four around the outer periphery. Uh, the two in the middle are used to uh, uh, calibrate the rain gauge. So if you mess with those, you're going to mess up your, uh, your rain readings. But let me show you how this uh, comes apart. Okay, first of all, after you take that, uh, those two pieces off, this piece, uh, the four screws off, this piece comes off. So you have a top unit and a bottom unit. And all the electronics are in the bottom unit. Uh, this is the rain gauge here, uh, tipping rain gauge, as you can see. And it has a little magnet here that uh, is sensed uh, by a, a detector so that it knows how many times uh, the, uh, it, it's, uh, it's rocked. Uh, here is the temperature sensor in this little um, uh, portion and um, there is a grate at the bottom of this uh, the fan goes above this part of the unit and uh, allegedly sucks the air from the bottom up through past the uh, temperature sensor uh, and uh, and that's the way it uh, it, it attempts to uh, make an accurate temperature measurement but the airflow uh, through that area is just not sufficient. I'm going to take this piece off too. This will show you some of the electronics that are in the in the unit. Uh, the top uh, connector is actually uh, the uh, wind speed detector. Okay. All right. After you get this piece off, um, you uh, there are three more screws under this section. And when, when you remove, and they're over in this general area, when you remove that, then this piece will come off. Okay, this, uh, this houses the, um, the fan and the wind speed detector. And uh, the wind speed detector, I'm gonna flip it over. I've already removed something here, but if, if you look at the wind speed, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but you see that shaft there? That actually is, um, uh, has another piece on when you remove it. It's actually a, a little black um, uh, rotor that has a magnetic uh, uh, a piece on it. And as the wind speed, uh, uh, as that, the anemometer rotates, that black uh, piece rotates and is detected by the sensor uh, right on this end, this, uh, this area there. And um, so, uh, you can easily remove it. It's only uh, friction uh, mounted. There's no screws or anything. And if you just slowly uh, move the, uh, the the anemometer part uh, back and forth, uh, and just push a, put a little uh, pressure uh, away from the shaft, uh, it will eventually come off. And you need to take that off to get the next piece off. And as you can see, this is the fan right there, um, and that's. Uh, only powered by a solar cell that's in the top unit. It's not powered by the batteries that are in the bottom of the unit that powers the rest of the electronics. Okay, there's three more screws on the bottom of that unit, and then this comes off, and let me get see if I can pull it off. Yeah. 
Okay, this is the uh, this is the piece with the rotor and the anemometer. But under here, you can see the solar cell. The solar cell is right here, and it can be removed easily. It has a regulator board in the back here. Let me see if I can get in focus a little bit better here. Uh, the little green board is uh, a, has a regulator on, and uh, it regulates the voltage a little bit. Um, the problem is, is that most times the fan is uh, is not going to turn very fast. Uh, in fact, it ha seems to have a problem with the motor. And if we look at the motor a little bit here, let's see. I have to take. The, let me see if I can get the solar cell out of here one-handed. Yeah. Okay. You can see the motor is right in the bottom there, uh, underneath the. Um, underneath the solar cell and um, the problem with that motor it's a DC motor with a magnet and uh, it it has a tendency to have a little trouble getting started so even if the uh, if the solar uh, uh, you know if the Sun is hitting the solar cell it doesn't always immediately turn sometimes it just sticks even with indirect sunlight so it takes a you know a little bit of extra voltage really to get that mo motor turning some people have uh, said they had luck by adding um, adding additional solar cells to this uh, unit. In fact, the company Accurite does sell a replace replacement piece for this whole top section that actually has two uh, solar cells rather than one. Uh, some people have had luck with that, uh, though others say that even that is not powerful enough to power the fan fast enough. Uh, in fact, there are some people who actually uh, have used um, uh, a external DC power supply of uh, a transformer to continuously power that motor. There's another problem I've noticed, and I, I don't know if you can see these holes. Those holes are actually the vent for the fan. And uh, as you can see, there's not there's three on one side and three on the other. And I suspect that part of the problem is that that is really not enough surface uh, uh, openings to uh, uh, get airflow even with the fan. Um, the, the unit, this whole section here is actually the sun shield. It's a, a louvered, so you basically have two louvers for the sun shield. And any, anyone else, uh, if you have another weather station uh, uh, like the uh, fine offset or the uh, um, ambient weather um, uh, WS1080, uh, you'll find that uh, those sun shields have many louvers. They have a lot of louvers to allow uh, good uh, air circulation, even though they don't have aspirated fans. So um, I'm really disappointed with this uh, unit. I had high hopes. The rain gauge does a beautiful job, very accurate reading on the rain gauge. And it looks like the wind speed uh, is very accurate in wind direction. But really, uh, as far as uh, the temperature sensing is concerned, it's not going to be very accurate. Uh, and, um, you know, that, that's kind of disappointing. So if you have any questions about this uh, little review, uh, give me a tweet uh, at Pat Penn, P-A-T-P-E-N-D, and I'll try and answer them. Thanks a lot.